Would Cardano have dumped in price had Bitcoin not gone down? I don't know, and I'm kind of glad I don't have to find out. Welcome back to Redspark Crypto Blog for your crypto and Cardano news. So I'm sure you're all aware that Sunday Swap launched last night, and right on cue, Bitcoin also dumped 7.1%. Um, I guess let's talk about the Bitcoin dumping first. I'm sure that's uh, made a lot of headlines as well. Um, I haven't really seen any real reason for the dump, although my own hunch is is to do with, I mean, it's obviously related to greater macroeconomic factors because you can see the Nasdaq also dumped as well. But um, I suspect it's to do with potential confrontation with Russia. So if you're following the news around Ukraine, you will have seen that the tension with Russia is certainly heating up. It is looking more and more like there is going to be some skirmish, some invasion of the Ukraine by Russia. I really would not be surprised now. Um, and the war, the rhetoric has also heated up. So the UK is sending military personnel, boots on the ground is happening now. Whereas before people were thinking it would just be sort of sanctions. Spain, I believe, is sending some uh, a ship as well. Um, and meanwhile, the US is threatening the worst sanctions ever to be seen. <laughs> um, so the US seems to be a lot more reticent about actually having boots on the ground. And it still doesn't sound like they would do that. But they got called up for not uh, taking a stronger approach. Um, I think in the earlier Biden conference earlier this week, he had said um, the level of response would be proportional to what Russia did. Um, and I think he used the phrase, if Russia did a minor incursion, <laughs> which is his way of saying, if uh, Russia invaded, but just a little bit, then you know we won't do too much, uh, which is ridiculous, obviously. Um, and so they've come out with stronger wording like yesterday as well. So the Allies are putting on a much stronger front to Russia and uh, a few European countries are actually sending personnel over to the Ukraine. Um, so things are definitely heating up and I can see why that would cause uncertainty in the market. People will start fleeing a lot of uh, risk on assets, as, as they call it. Um, and I know gold is going going up a little bit. Now, Bitcoin's a new gold, I hear you say. Why, why did Bitcoin not go up? Um, obviously, I am not a financial advisor, and I barely know what I'm talking about, so definitely do not rely on me. But then don't really rely on other YouTubers either. I don't think anybody really knows what's going on. However, if you want my personal opinion, um, I do think Bitcoin or crypto uh, can be an alter alternative to gold. Um, but... I do think it does react to stock market movements in the short term. So I think in the longer term, there's a, a reasonable argument to be made for Bitcoin being a new gold. But I think that plays out in the longer term, not in the short term. In the short term, you'll always see it swinging uh, in correlation to the stock market. How am I feeling about all this uh, with the price dumping? Um, generally quite calm <laughs> quite i'm actually feeling less stressed now than i was i think a week or two ago when cardano was dropping i think it's because cardano had gone up above one dollar twenty and now it's come down so we're kind of back at an okay level i know it's not great but it's not terrible either um so that's probably why compared to a week or two ago when it dropped further than this i think the next month is gonna uh, be pretty volatile. I can see, honestly, I can see Bitcoin going down to about 35k over the next month. And then I am hoping it will then swing back up. Um, and that's just based on, let's see if I can see in this chart here, if I do a one year chart uh, over here, that's just based on the fact that this dip took a couple of weeks to play out before it went back up. So if I sort of see this down here, I reckon we're about here somewhere, so it's going to go on for a couple of weeks before it goes back up. Moving on to Sunday Swap, uh, it was a bit of a glorious mess, wasn't it? <laughs> um, it is how uh, the Sunday team described it might be in their blog post a week or two ago. Um, there was a lot of congestion, 
um, and a lot of people were, were quite frustrated. So my own experience was this. I tried to do a swap as soon as it launched and I found that my orders just disappeared. Um, I tried to do a second uh, transaction that appears to have gone through and it's sitting there on the order screen although because this price here has now gone up beyond the default uh, range that my order was set for um, it's unlikely my transaction will ever get completed so I'm gonna try and cancel that in fact I've got a little wallet screen up here trying to cancel it it's been running for a little while now so I think just really the first couple of days of this is just going to be very painful to use and I've given up and really expecting much from it. That being said, it is going to die down. The level of interest in Sunday Swap is insane. The very fact that you've got people like me who don't normally or haven't in the past used DEXs um, who are trying to do swaps and, and use a DEX for really the first time. Um, I have done a little bit before but not much. That's saying a lot, and I saw similar comments online as well. A lot of people saying, oh, I've never done this before, etc., etc. So yeah, you've got a lot of noobs like me trying to get in to DEXs. Um, and the good thing is, um, other than the initial carnage right now, but the good thing is people like me who've had a taste of DEXs, we will return once things die down. You, you know, there is now a wider level of education amongst the Cardano community about DEXs now I would say than there was because previously a lot of us just staked our ADA and we didn't really faff around with all the well I mean we couldn't do it on Cardano um, and so and Ethereum just seemed very costly and exotic so a lot of us I, I suspect just played it safe and just staked our ADA and, and that was about it and it's Cardano that's bringing us into DeFi not, not, not anything else so apologies to anybody that's been left frustrated, but it will get better and we should continue to engage with the DAP and DeFi ecosystem on Cardano. Um, also, as for this Sunday price, there was a little bit of um, controversy. Um, somebody was smart enough to realize that this is just the user interface we're looking at. Behind it, there's a protocol that sits on the blockchain that is already there on the blockchain. Um, so somebody figured out they could create an order in advance outside of this user interface and submit it to the blockchain ahead of everybody else. Everybody else would have been going on here, clicking swap, doing all, all of that stuff. They would have, as soon as the um, smart contract became activated, they would have just submitted their order directly using their own sort of uh, program. Um, and as a result, they managed to get ahead of, the, of everybody else and buy up a large amount of Sunday. And so I think the price went up from, I think it was 0 0.16 to 0 0.18. Um, um, so they, they got Sunday at a, at a good discount and that's obviously even higher than that. So they've definitely done well. They were, I would like to say that they were quite smart. <laughs> it doesn't feel great though, uh, as somebody who couldn't get any Sunday where I got priced out because the price went up too high for my range. So yeah, I, a day later, I don't have any Sunday. Um, I don't have any uh, liquid and I don't have any Pavia. Those are the ones that I was trying to buy yesterday and I'm left with nothing. So that definitely is frustrating, but I feel like our expectations were set. IOG are making more improvements to the parameters of the Cardano blockchain in the next couple of days and weeks. So that's definitely going to help things. And then the big improvement is happening in June with the, the hard fork. That one, for those who don't know, well, there's a number of things happening there. But the one I'm most interested by is um, smart contracts right now are being clogged up because the the scripts are actually quite large. They're taking up a lot, lot of space. And that's because all the logic for the script has to be kept within the script. So one transaction has the entire script in there. Um, with the CIP uh, proposal and then the hard fork upgrade in June, what developers can do is reference other scripts on the blockchain. So somebody could upload one script and then uh, they could create another protocol that is referencing that script. That way you're basically separating your code out and not everything is contained in one transaction and that will significantly reduce the size of your average smart contract transaction. So that definitely will help. But until then, just expect everything to run slowly. 
Here's a chart showing the volume on CC Wallet last night. You can see it going up as Sunday Swap launched. Um, and the message, we were running four database sync servers for a few weeks now, and the number of users steadily increased over last month. In anticipation of the launch, we added two new database sync servers. We thought we were well prepared, but no. <laughs> um, so that just goes to show how much demand there was last night. Uh, moving on, this little uh, conversation is rather interesting. So Raul Powell, the famous uh, investor, got into a little tiff with Greg Foss, uh, who's some Bitcoin maxi from what I can tell. Um, in fact, I've got an article open up over here. Um, and as part of that, Rao Paul um, confessed that he only owns one Bitcoin. So he used to own a lot of Bitcoin, but increasingly he's been moving towards Ethereum. And as part of this sort of uh, argument they were having, he let on that uh, they only have one Bitcoin. And I kind of agreed with this sentiment. Um, um, so Greg Foss said, the world is not a trade, sir. It is an end goal. So I have to read the other history for, to, for that to make sense. But uh, Rao Paul said, and that is your issue. I don't share your philosophy, so you attack me, really? This is why I hold only one Bitcoin. The community has lost sight of inclusion, and you, sir, are helping reduce the network effects by excluding people who don't share, oops, I've lost the article, who don't share your view from the network. Um, and Raoul Pal's all about the network effect, the idea that um, a social network like Facebook or, or Bitcoin, etc., just continually grows exponentially. But that can be hampered if suddenly the mentality, I don't know why he keeps doing that, oh, it brings up the tweet. Um, it, uh, if the mentality of the people of that network becomes closed-minded, then it hampers the, the growth. The interesting point for me is, okay, Rao Pal has clearly changed his position. He came in hard on Bitcoin, thinking Bitcoin was the best thing. And now a year or two later has realized, oh, no, I, I disagree with myself. I was wrong. I think Ethereum's the best thing. What's not to say he doesn't realize a year or two later, oh, actually, gas fee, ETH2 upgrades, etc. None of that's looking good. I was wrong again. And Cardano is actually the best thing, or possibly another chain as well. So just, you know, whenever you hear about these great famous experts who are into one thing or another, just know that they are just fallible like the rest of us and they may change their mind over time. Solana could become the visa of digital asset world, Bank of America. Solana and other blockchains may snag market share from Ethereum over time, the bank said in a research note. Specifically, Solana prioritizes scalability but a relatively less decentralized and secure blockchain has trade-offs, il illustrated by several network performance issues since in inception. Ethereum prioritizes decentralization and security, but at the expense of scalability, which has led to periods of network congestion and transaction fees that are occasionally larger than the value of the transaction being sent. Um, yes, I think Solana is has been designed to be a high-speed centralized operating system essentially um, so it's kind of a hybrid between visa and, and public blockchains um, so i can see why somebody might think that it can, becomes a new visa um, but i don't think it's necessarily uh, guaranteed for example i don't see why cardano couldn't set up a a side chain that also instills very high system requirements on the participants of that side chain, and therefore they could transact much, much quicker. So I can see that happening on Cardano, and that could potentially also, you could argue, could replace Visa and so on. And then all the other blockchains could make a similar argument. So I don't necessarily see it as a slam dunk here, uh, but I thought it was an interesting article. The other article I found interesting, um, I was watching or listening into the... Uh, uh, congressional hearing on the energy usage of specifically Bitcoin uh, that occurred yesterday. Um, there's really just two key moments from it. One was uh, Bitfury's Brian Brooks, the former acting controller of the currency. They always have this after his name. Um, he made a strong case for Bitcoin, but 
he was a little bit sneaky. He did it at the expense of proof of stake and tried to insinuate proof of stake is not as secure as Bitcoin uh, or as as proof of work, and that's why you you know there's nothing comparable to proof of work, um, which is not true. And then the next person who spoke straight after him, um, I think it would have been the Cornell Tech professor. Um, uh, Ari Jules, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, I think it would have been that person. They, uh, <laughs> they uh, thankfully put forward an alternative argument to, well, not an alternative argument. They explained uh, within realistic uh, parameters, proof of stake is just as safe. And the evidence for that is you've got card, uh, systems like Cardano running for many years now, uh, for well, two years now, and they've got billions of dollars locked up and they have not been hacked. Now, he didn't mention Cardano by name, but there aren't that many proof of stake blockchains that have been running uh, for that long with that much value in there. So he made a good defense of proof of stake, I thought. And um, one good argument that um, Mr. Brooks made uh, that I do agree with is that Bitcoin has the ability to make use of the surplus energy that might be in a the surplus green energy that might be generated. So quite often the drawback of green energy like wind power, solar power is that they keep generating energy even when it's not needed and it goes to waste. Um, but Bitcoin could be used, that, you know, that energy could be turned into Bitcoin essentially, and that way you're in a weird way capturing the value of that energy, so you're not losing it. So that's a fair argument, that's a completely fair argument, I agree with that. Um, and I'm all for Bitcoin playing in that space, but Bitcoin isn't just playing in that space. Bitcoin is being used anywhere anybody can get cheap energy regardless of whether it's surplus energy or not. The fact that somebody might open up a wind farm to mine Bitcoin or, or whatever, let's say, that doesn't really, I, I don't agree with that. Use that wind farm energy to provide people with cheaper energy. Only when that energy doesn't have any other use in society can you use it for Bitcoin. So that's that's my personal stance. As you know, I don't hold any Bitcoin. Um, and as a result, I feel I'm, I'm freer to criticize Bitcoin's energy usage. But at the same time, I'm also reliant on Bitcoin's price not to dump too much. Otherwise, the whole crypto market dumps. So there you go. Right, I'm going to pretty much end it here. Uh, if you did want to know more about Cardano scaling, I highly recommend this blog post on the IOHK website. Um, in particular, I think this is the one that seems to be getting a lot of uh, mentions from Charles Hoskinson. So I'm going to try and dig around a little bit more on this, but I roughly understand it. It's to do with the fact that um, right now Cardano does all its transactions on every beat of its of its network, so the, the blockchain network um, has a certain beat to it. Um, I think it's like every second or something. Yeah, in fact, it is every second, if I recall. Uh, so every second something happens, and in between those seconds, nothing much happens. Input or endorsers will allow for things to happen in between those seconds uh, that will significantly increase throughput of the network. Um, okay, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and follow me along on Twitter. Other than that, I'll be back. My next video, I'm going to do a deep dive on some topic. Haven't decided yet what topic it should be. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I hope you all have a great day.